Back in Las Vegas with David Kahn, the president of basketball operations for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, you talked a little bit about the plan in place to, to change uh, the philosophy in terms of what you're doing on the floor. How do you go about changing culture as well after a 15 win season? Al Jefferson had been a part of the suffering there in Minnesota for quite a while. He's out of the equation now. You've got Kurt Rambis in for his second year. Uh, how do you address that? That's such an intangible thing to deal with. And it doesn't happen overnight. I thought that we started last season, even though there was no improvement in terms of wins and losses, but our facilities, our practice court, our weight room needed to be upgraded. They were. We, we modernized our players' lounge. We did new things that had never been done before in terms of you know, things that are just done in the NBA by routine but weren't being done in Minnesota. We have breakfast and lunch now you know, before and after practice. We needed to get to a mindset of hard work and organization and attention to detail, and frankly, I don't think the organization really f reflected that. But you can't just snap your fingers and say, oh, we're going to be a better culture now. It takes months, years of doing things in a routine and a disciplined fashion before you really have that. And you do have to start having some success on the court to every, for everybody to really buy into it. And I think that we'll be better this year. We're in a ridiculously tough conference. And the, the West is still really loaded and really stacked. So we know our time is still a couple years away, but I do believe we'll be a much better ball club this year. A very competitive division as well. Yeah, David, and I know you spoke a little bit about this because you talked about his passing, but I, I'm still intrigued with Darko Militrix. What do you see that no one else sees that Darko has that what, what do you see that he brings to the table and that and that can come out under your team? I think that Darko came over here way too early. I think he made a terrible mistake and should have never been picked second in the draft. However, the people that picked him second in the draft saw the talent and the skill that he has. And he went through a very rough patch in Detroit. He was just way too immature and young to really handle the NBA lifestyle. When he went to Orlando, he started to play pretty well. And I've, I spoke to Brian Hill about this, and Brian liked, liked him a lot. But they went in a different direction that summer when they signed Richard Lewis, had renounced him. Then he goes to Memphis. It's not a great situation there. And he goes to New York, and, and you know, for whatever reason, Mike D'Antoni chose not to play him. With us, it was like manna from heaven. I mean, he's seven foot one legitimately he's he moves fluidly like a forward he's got it I've never I haven't seen a big man pass like him he really does <laughs> wow. pass like Vlade wow. in, in that respect you know you like can see Vlade the Diva. absolutely whoa he's a great passing big man and he you know Vlade will be the first one to tell you that Vlade's known about the kids since he grew up in Serbia yeah. 70 miles north of um, Belgrade so nobody is jumping up and down yet what Darko needs to do is put a whole season together, you know, but he's gotten married. He has a boy. I think that he's much more mature than he was when he broke in the league, and we expect him to have a decent little season, and I think he has a great chance of being our starting well, center. Yeah, and I, and I asked that question, you know, not thinking of him the way that you did, but one thing that, you know, every guy that's played this game knows is that all it takes is for someone to believe in you and put you in a position for success. So I'll definitely be looking forward to watching his growth with you guys this year. Well, and I think that your career is somewhat indicative. I mean, I, when, what year was it that you really felt like you kind of felt like you were in your own in the league? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure, but <laughs> we're not but talking not about me and Darko at the same time. No. But not until you got to Sacramento. Did right. your career take off? Uh, well, I don't want to talk about me. We're, we're talking to you, and we're not going to talk about me and Darko in the same sentence. I'm not suggesting, Chris, that your <laughs> I career know, I'm just it. Joking, baby. But it Come takes on, time for some of these guys. You know, everybody's so it impatient. Does. And the fact that he's young and the fact that he's tall, it's just, you know, you just want to know when other teams have given up on a guy kind of or, or not played them for reasons or behind the scenes we don't know. And so just want to know what it was in with him that you saw and definitely be looking forward to seeing that this year. Do you think stability and, and belief is the missing ingredients? Are the missing ingredients? And, it, and I think style of play. I think he bought okay. it. He, you know, the, the type of game that Kurt plays for some people is hard to kind of pick up. We play a lot of elements of the triangle and a lot of the things that, you know, Chris's team ran in Sacramento had some of those elements. It took, it took, Dur it took Darko two days to pick up what many of the players needed literally two months to pick up. The NBA will be watching. David, we appreciate the time. David Kahn, President of Basketball Operations for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Thank you very much to for join having us me. here at the Cox Pavilion. Good luck. Your T-Wolves up by one here in the second quarter. Back with more after this.